Hello again, this is Dave with OC Astronomy. You know, one of my all-time favorite telescopes and uh, gigantic telescopes in the world is the Palomar Observatory. Um, did you know that the original dome was silver before they painted it white? How would you like to be the guy that had to paint that dome? And look, look, there's a, there's a man standing on the porch there. Imagine having to get out the roller and paint brushes when somebody said, no, I want that thing to be white. There's the opening day canceled stamp and here's the inner workings of the beast. Again, I love how they include a man there in his work shirt, rolled up shirt sleeves, uh, showing how gargantuan it is. There's the uh, mirror cell and the, uh, the giant yoke that it takes to uh, to make that telescope run the big 200 inch. Well, that's a little bit how I feel because I just got through setting up the Celestron Edge 1100 HD on its tripod. Oh, oh you beauty. Now the thing is, I intentionally set this up with the tripod legs pretty much extended out all the way. Because I wanted to give a, an idea of relative size. There's a, the ceiling of our class, is nine foot ceilings. Um, and here's your, here's the telescope. The, uh, this is basically at eye level, the, uh, the declination and right ascension knobs. So having the legs out all the way puts the eyepiece up here. Um, so I'm actually having to reach up to touch it. Um, I just wanted to show that for perspective. In the dome, I am definitely not going to be running this um, all the way up. We're going to maybe go down a few hash marks. The good thing is the tripod is marked with these uh, black lines and then if you can see the little indentations that you can count for hash marks to know where you're at. Um, so that is very helpful. The tripod itself has this uh, newly designed tray. And what's interesting is, this screw does not do any part of holding the telescope mount. It, like in the old days, it doesn't go up and attach. It's just to hold this tray. And an interesting part of it is this little guy is fluted. You notice these threads are wider than these threads, and I was trying to figure out what that's all about. Because whenever you unspin the knob and get to that point, it just drops, and then you can unspin it the rest of the way off the final threads. And then it hit me. So these indentations there for the legs, whenever you unscrew this knob, it'll drop down, 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 and then drop. And I suppose that'll give some freedom to this tray and you can uh, spin it around a quarter turn so that whenever you collapse the tripod legs in, they can collapse onto these divots, allowing you to fold the legs up. That's pretty handy. Um, the Instruction manual says to put the counterweight bar over the leg, and that's how it is in the picture. Um, that makes sense for stability, I guess. And then that leaves you to uh, adjust the uh, altitude uh, for latitude. And then your azimuth adjustment is here. Um, however, I think it's a whole lot easier, at least doing rough alignment, to just do, you know, to move it manually. Um, We'll see how that goes in practice. I think in order to be effective at, at adjusting these, you're gonna to have to take the Allen wrench and loosen these uh, corner screws a little bit so that this top plate and bottom plate will slide, I guess. We'll have to see what it, how, that, how that works exactly. Um, I've got my AC power hooked up and to a power pack there, the Celestron power pack, and it comes with an extended uh, cable so you can you can go with a short cable or you can add this extension um, to get you to where you want to be the hand controller plugs in here and the velcro uh, strap cradle uh, attaches to the legs right there and then you put your uh, you put your telescope on now a word to the wise Whenever you are balancing uh, the, the 11 inch, um, I, it took these two counterweights and uh, you notice they're down here by the toe stoppers. Um, 
I did have, or the, the catch here at the bottom, I did have to run those all the way pretty much to the end, but it balances. Um, however, whenever I went to do the balancing in this direction, um, with the weight of the cell, and I went ahead and put the two inch eyepiece on there, um, whenever I went to balance it, you'll notice I had to take out the little, um, this, this little screw here. There was another screw like it on the back, but I had to take that off in order to scoot the dovetail up. It, it was hitting right here, um, as designed, I guess, but I actually had to scoot it a little further up to be able to balance um, the weight of the optics with the eyepiece. Now, I don't know how it's gonna go whenever I get my camera hooked on there, because my camera is, and, and the uh, you'll see the little doodad that I got, um, the, the focuser, is, is gonna be heavier even than this eyepiece and diagonal. Another thing, um, I took off the little inch and a quarter adjuster, or T, T adapter, I think it was, as a T adapter, and I put in its place the star diagonal, and I tightened it down, but I noticed one thing, these threads here. So it's threaded here, it's got the big threads here, and then it's got this this thread that attaches to the, the uh, mirror plate, or the mirror box there. So check this out. Whenever you put a little bit of leverage on there, um, it unscrews. And down goes your expensive two inch eyepiece. I don't know if it would whack anything, but it would certainly give you the fright of your young life if you didn't realize that it was loose and you put that eyepiece in there and then whoop, it just went. Um, so I'm going to snug that up here. I think that's a flaw. I don't know how in the world you could justify having threads that could loosen up under the weight of this thing. Cause remember you're on an equatorial mount. So the thing's going to be in different positions. The, the back end's going to be pointing in different ways and you're going to have different stresses. So at some point, the weight of this eyepiece, or if you had a camera attached here or so, some such, is gonna act like a big weight on a lever arm and it's just gonna unscrew the thing. Um, I'll try and avoid doing that whenever I first use it. And um, the other thing is the mirror clutches. Um, this has the focuser and the clutch here and a clutch here that are designed to, actually whenever you, whenever you find focus, you're supposed to tighten the clutches and that will prevent the uh, mirror cell from shifting around. That's ideal if you have another uh, focuser mounted on the back of here. So you can clamp those down and then you won't have any image shift if you're taking pictures. Um, but before you do go out and use it with an eyepiece for the first time and you wanna focus, you've gotta remember to loosen these um, at least a couple turns so that you're not clamping down the mirror cell because otherwise you're gonna crank on this and why isn't it focusing? And then you're gonna wind up pushing internally on the, on the uh, mirror cell and it's gonna shift it because of the torque and this side is gonna be clamped down. So you're gonna be uh, pushing it aside. That's no bueno. So make sure if it's tightened whenever you first get it out, um, they may tighten them down for travel so they won't be bouncing around, but I would loosen those. Um, now let's have a look at this handle. This is a very valuable tool when you're trying to mount the telescope for the first time um, and you're trying to get it balanced. You really wanna keep your hands on that handle. Whenever you're loosening the uh, knobs that hold the dovetail plate on, you wanna hold of that handle. Just trust me, it's heavy. And if you're trying to do it by yourself, uh, you're in for a surprise whenever you let go and oopsie. Another thing, the little thing I noticed, um, right here, you'll notice a gap. There's a, it's not a gap really, but here's, here's the plate, okay? Here's the dovetail plate, here's the clamp, and whenever I went to balance it, I nearly had a heart attack because I thought that the clamp wasn't biting all the way onto this piece. But if you look in there, it is. It's clamped in there. It's just that they've rounded it I guess they've uh, they've rounded this that entry and made it a little bit wider than the clamp is so that you can fit the dovetail in if you're trying to slide it up in there. It's kind of like a magwell on a 
uh, you know, extended magwell on a Glock or a 1911, where you're going to want a wider entry point so that whenever you put it in there, it'll find the hole and then it'll go up in there. Um, but whenever you're just looking at it, it's on both ends. It, it looks like it's out of alignment, but are out of, you know, it looks like your dovetail plate isn't clamped on good because there's, there's this gap and it's, you know, it's not because whenever you actually clamp it down, um, you know, you feel a good bite whenever you turn these knobs in there, you feel the bite, you feel it's not going anywhere, but it's just a little bit of a heart attack if you don't know what's coming with that. So I would suggest knowing about that. Um, <laughs> a little bit of comedy. Don't point the telescope at the sun without a proper filter. Yeah, I think uh, that much magnification and uh, a aperture would do a number on your retinas um, if you were unfortunate enough. All right, well, that's a quick walkthrough of the mount all put together. Oh, I didn't ever turn it on. Let's do this together. I have not done it yet. Here's the power button. Let's see, it says, verifying packages, please wait. CGX ready, press enter to begin alignment. Well, yeah. Setting switch position. Back to accept current as switch position. Press enter to move to switch position. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, it didn't have to do much. That's the internal home sensors. I was pretty much straight on to home, so it didn't have to move very much. All right, it's moving to switch position. It, it's, what it's doing is it has actual internal sensors to know how well to point this way and how well it's, it's aligned that way. There are no stickers with arrows on them, but there is an internal thing. Moving to switch position. I guess it's, having a look-see, but while it runs through that, at least we know the power works, it turns on, I heard the motors move, I've looked at the optics, they look clean, let's have a look at those and then I'll wrap things up here. Let's get, uh, I have to be careful about doing this, very gently, All right, it is balanced okay, I, it's still, you'll notice, uh, if I let go, it's still a little heavy on the back end. So I don't know how that's gonna work with my camera setup. But here are our optics. Oh! Uh, Edge HD, 11 inch. Yay, 2800 millimeters at F10. Starbright XLTs, and man, that mirror. I'm getting the benefit of looking at it. <laughs> I'm getting the benefit, there's my beard. Uh, I'm getting the benefit of looking at it myself in real life as opposed to through a camera. And I can tell you, it is pretty. There's not, there's not a speck of dust on it. Um, it is beautiful. And of course, it's, it's fast star compliant if you want to remove the secondary and put a camera there, um, you can. So it's still a little bit back end heavy. I'm gonna to have to look at that and see what I can do to get a counterweight or something that I can attach where that front toe saber goes, I guess. All right, now that I've jacked up the index position, I'll have to turn it off and try again later. But um, there it is, there's a quick walkthrough of the Celestron Edge 1100 HD, uh, fresh out of the box, and I hope you enjoy.